salvation to all those, amen. And also, remember to keep Eric Bachman in your prayers. Also, I want to pray for Eric, Brother Eric, amen. He has uh, uh, surgery tomorrow, amen. So we want to pray that God will bring healing, that God will give the doctors wisdom, but that it will be success and that that uh, all these blood vessels and everything will begin to flow properly, amen, that God will, that God will just intervene, amen. So we want to pray for him for tomorrow, amen. So let's let's pray for the surrounding churches, Riverside, Rialto, San Bernardino, amen. And of course, here in Rupa Valley, let's not forget, amen, the, the church in San Fernando Valley, amen. Also, San Diego, Church in Indio, our mother church in El Centro, Pastor Lorenzo, Sister Stephanie, Pastor Tony Hernandez, Sister Angelina. And of course, the churches in Mexico, all through Baja, amen, amen, for all the churches, uh, Tijuana, Mexicali, Rosarito, Ensenada. Amen. I want to pray that God will just be with them. Amen. And that for those who attended the Edmonton rally, that God will just be with them. That God will continue to help them and continue keeping them revived. Amen. So you know what? Uh, tonight, amen, uh, you can trust in God. Amen. There's a lot of things that, that, that we go through, and many times we think we don't see a way out of it. Amen. Like tonight, amen, I don't see a way out of these TVs. I'm going to throw them both out the door. Amen. But God, I want to trust in God because he's going to do something great with them. Amen. So you gotta you gotta trust in God, Amen. Trust in God, allow God, Amen, to bless you this this uh, this evening, Amen. So let's cry to God, let's worship God as we open up our prayer, Amen. So let's worship God. Ooh, hallelujah, my Lord Jesus, I praise you, my God, I thank you, my Lord, Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, God, we, God, my Father, we praise and we worship you, God, tonight, God. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, God. God, that you help us tonight, God, that you just pour out your spirit, God. Open up our hearts, open up our minds, remove all distractions, God. God, teach us, God, and God, I pray, God, that you just continue to, to move mightily, God. God, that, you would, that, that we would just live, God, for you, God, and that we would respond to your word. And we thank you, Lord, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You take time to read some of this. Amen. We got some announcements tonight. Amen. I uh, just want to remind you of our regular services every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Every Wednesday at 7. Um, don't forget, October the 6th, we're going to bring back our Sunday night fight. So that'll be the first and third Sunday. However, for, for uh, the month of October, it's going to be the first and fourth Sunday for the month of October because of scheduling. Because... On the fourth weekend, we are going to have a two-day revival with Pastor Noe Garcia. He is the pastor from the La Gloria Tijuana Church. Amen. Um, he's the one that was announced to go to Spain. Uh, that was, that's was that been in the works. Not sure where we're at on that. Uh, the Spanish government wants a ridiculous amount of money for us to open up a church out there. Um, so we just want to pray that God will open doors for that. Amen. So, uh, but anyways, on uh, the last the last weekend of October, amen, we're going to have a two-day revival, the 26th and 27th. Saturday will be at 6 o'clock at night. We'll have services. 
And then on uh, Sunday, we're going to have two services. One is 10 in the morning and then 6 o'clock at night. Amen. That will be our Sunday night flight. And we'll be inviting the surrounding churches to attend. Amen. All these services except for the Sunday morning. Amen. Don't forget women. Amen. Um, I don't I don't understand. I, I don't know any other way to say this other than women. You need Jesus and you need to go to this thing. Amen. So women's conference. Amen. Uh, November the 22nd and 23rd at the El Central Church. Uh, uh, my wife, Amen, Sister Martha, she'll be going down there. It's a Friday and Saturday. Friday night service and then Saturday morning. They're going to have a couple services on the morning service on Saturday. And then they're going to feed you guys. Uh, El Centro is our mother church. That's the church that my pastor's at, and that's the church that's the founding church of our fellowship. They're the ones that are that are investing in, the, in, in everywhere. So this is a good opportunity for us to go and support. Amen. You got uh, Sister Debbie, Sister Maria, and Sister Pauline. Amen. You're going to hear some good messages, so I want to encourage you to be a part of that. Amen. You can share rooms. You can get your own room. You can, live, you can sleep in the car. I don't care what you do. Amen. Just get down there. Amen. Amen. So these are all the announcements. We're going to put up an offering. Amen. So let's worship God. Amen. You get this evening, you give with an open heart, amen. Amen. You be faithful with your tithes and offerings. Allow God to continue to move, amen. Um, let's uh, let's bow our hearts this evening, amen. As good angel bless the gift of the Lord. Father God, we ask this evening to bless these tithes and offerings for your precious love. We ask that you bless those that continue to give faithfully into your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 What a mighty God we serve. Angels brought before him and in with the door. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels brought before him and in with the door. What a mighty God we serve. situate both iPads. Okay, so remember the, the, this is Bible study, so I need sharing. Okay, you guys need to share. You need to speak. Um, we started this Bible study last week, and it's called, Why Do We Share? Right? Some of you guys are in that picture. As, as Christians, remember, I, I always say it, your selfish day is the day you get saved. After that, we share. We, we spend the rest of our life investing into other people, letting other people know about God, giving of ourselves, amen, amen, to further, to further the kingdom of God, to allow, to allow people to experience what we've experienced, okay? And it, this is important. This is important. Does anybody know why it's important that we share? Why is it important that we share what God has done in our life to someone else? To get others saved. To get others saved. To get others saved. Right? The whole purpose of the cross was what? To bring salvation. So we got to get people saved. Today what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit more about that. And I think we're going to end it with an exercise. I'm going to, I'm going to get a volunteer from you guys to come up here and have a conversation with me at the end. So be prepared. So remember we talked last week that, you know what, with Jesus Christ, we're not condemned. Right? We're not condemned when it comes to God. 
It says, it says, when we don't believe in God, we're already condemned. But because we believe in God, we're no longer condemned. So I want to start. We're going to read this scripture. We're going to read it two times. Because there's, there's two versions. This is the New King James Version, which is, the, which is the Bible I always use. And then we're going to read another version. And, I, and I'm having both because I want, I want you to see how we can get in depth with this. Okay, who wants to read this? Okay. Give thanks to the Lord. Right? How? Call on his name. Right? By doing what? Making known his deeds. To who? To the peoples, right? To everyone. So that's that's how it says. So right here the Bible tells us when you tell somebody about God, it's not because Pastor Ben tells you that you gotta tell people and it makes you feel uncomfortable because you don't like talking to strangers. That's not what it's about. It's what God says. He says, if you want to give thanks to me, tell someone else about me. But does he tell you, does the Bible tell you to give them scripture? What does that scripture say? What are you going to tell him? His deeds. What are his deeds? What does that mean? Let it, it says, make known his deeds. What are the deeds of God? What, what are we going to make known? What he's done for you. Make known his deeds among the people. What does that mean? Tell somebody what God has done for you. We can get caught up in thinking, I can't share because I don't know enough about the Bible. Well, I can't, I can't quote scripture. The pastor always saying scripture, but I don't know where those things are at. And, and we can get caught up in that. But the Bible tells us, God says, call upon his name, but make known his deeds. You know, people want to know what God's done in your life. Most people don't care what he did to people's lives two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight thousand years ago. They don't, people don't care about that stuff. What they care about is what is God doing in your life now? Where is God in your life today? Is the God of the Bible still alive? How do we know if the God of the Bible is still alive? How, how, how will somebody know that? How will God know if the God of the Bible is still alive? So if you go, if you have a family friend who don't go to church, how will they know that the God in the Bible is still alive? Your testimony. Your testimony, right? Which are the deeds. Things that God has done for you. You let people know the deeds, what God has done for you, how God has moved in your life. It's not, it's not theological. You don't need to have a big degree to, to tell somebody about God. We know God is so awesome and so powerful and he's so mighty. But sometimes we can allow that to intimidate us from talking. So we got to let people know, right? So that's the New King James Version. This is the New Living Translation Version. Who wants to read that one? more simpler, right? Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his, proclaim his greatness, right? Proclaim it. That means take ownership of it. Grasp it. Own it. Hang on to it. Proclaim it. It's mine, right? Proclaim his greatness. Sometimes you're going to need to proclaim his greatness. We need to proclaim his greatness because sometimes we need to remember it's real. Okay? Things that are God's doing in your life, you need to know it's real. You can live your life, and I tell you, you live in your life for God, and what happens is sometimes you don't see what God's doing in your life. Have you ever gone to church and feel like nothing's happening? It, like I'm just going and there's, I don't know if God's will in my life. But meanwhile, everyone around you sees God moving. But sometimes we don't remember what God's doing in our life. That's why it's important that we share. We have to proclaim his greatness. God has really helped me. He has changed me. 
He has moved me out of the life that I have and brought me into a life that he has for me. Okay? We have to proclaim this. Why is this important? Because when it comes to sharing the gospel, when it comes to sharing who Jesus Christ is to you, it starts with who you are, who he is in your life. Right? You can't share you can't share God according to what he's doing in my life. Now you can tell somebody who may who may have a similar life to what you've heard me say about mine and say, hey, you wouldn't want to come, you know, talk with my pastor. But they want to know what's going on in your life. Why would I go to your church? Why would I serve your God? How do I know your God is real? Proclaim it. Right? Proclaim what he's done. So if I was to ask you, is there anything in your life that you can proclaim right now? Anything you can say, you know what, God's moving in my life. God's done something in my life. Is there anything? Now this is where I'm really asking you, okay? Somebody raise their hand. Is God doing something in your life? Is God really doing something in your life right now? Have you seen a change? Rick? Well, like, like, like last week, I, my clients at work, they want to do Bible study, and they believe that they can do it at work. They want to do it at work. So I said, well, I'm not going to do it at work. And I was trying to get up to them, and uh, I did some other things. I gave them a different number, and, they, they, and I called it, and they told me I could get it for free. And I, I think this way it was too much. That's proclaiming it. See, and you guys don't know the backside. She's always looking for these. They're little pamphlet, little things to give out to the to the people where she works. And that's proclaiming God meeting the need, saying, "God, you know what? I trusted in you. You saw the need. I'm serving you." Angel, you got your hand. You see, a little, little, backstory, little backstory, I was talking to Angel about this very thing. And what I told Angel was, was I go, I went with Angel to the hospital. And I went and prayed for this young man. And I'm going to go back. I'm going to try to make it there tomorrow. But I'm the pastor, okay? But they're not looking, they're not looking to me for God. Angel being the man of God in the situation, bringing God into the situation, now they're looking at him for God. They're looking at him as a represent as the representation of God. And that's who you are. You see, people, they don't look at me for the representation of God. You do because you come here. But other people don't. You know why they don't look at me? Because I am the pastor. They expect me to be close to God. They expect me to be a man who prays. They expect me to be somebody who reads the Bible. It's 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 what is it's what is expected of the pastor. But it's not expected of you. Not to most people in your life. People in your life, they they're like, oh. If I tell you what God's done in my life and how I how I get excited, well, that's the pastor. He's crazy. He gets excited over everything. But when you do it, it changes things. It really does. That really changes things. Ask somebody, can I pray with you? When somebody tells you, next time somebody tells you, oh, my back hurts, oh, my leg, I hit it. Tell them, can I pray for you? Can I pray for them. Put your hands on them. Put your hands on my head. Pow! <laughs> in the name of Jesus. <laughs> no, pray for them. Pray for them. You don't need to get super spiritual, and it's not a super prayer. 
The religious world will tell you that for certain things, you got to say a certain prayer in a certain way and use certain words. That's not the way God works. Nowhere in the Bible is it that way. God is just wants the open heart. He wants you to begin to believe in him for the miracle. Right? Believe in God for the miracle. And, and God will begin to answer your prayer. You know why God will answer your prayer? Because God wants to build your faith. Why is it important to build your faith? Because the stronger your faith, the more you'll do. The more you'll get excited. The more you'll the more you'll t people will be touched by you. Does that make sense? Okay. Any any questions, any put on this one? Okay. Well, we're talking about sharing, right? We're talking about sharing. You gotta share. You got to share, you got to share, you got to share, you got to share. Why? Who wants to read this one? The fruits of the righteous is the tree of life, right? Who's the righteous? Who's the righteous? The children of God. You're the righteous. Okay, you're the tree of life, right? You are the tree of life for people, okay? But the last, what does the last line say? This is why I wanted the scripture. He who wins souls is wise. Right? He who wins souls is wise. The Bible tells us it's wisdom to win a soul for God. It's wisdom. It's wisdom to win somebody for Jesus. I found through the years that I've run into a lot of people who are just good, nice people. Okay? And when you look at their lives, man, they look like they got it together. But when you begin to talk to them, begin to dig into who they are, you find that they're just as broken. Just because they're not doing drugs doesn't mean they're not broken. Just because their 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 marriage is still together and it's not broken up doesn't mean they're not broken. There's things that happen to people. We're talking about this a little bit today, about how how what's going on with this whole P Diddy stuff and all that stuff. And I was talking about how how in the past there was, there was men that would touch girls. And what I said was, it goes on. It still happens. And there's so many people that had to live with that, but learn how to live a regular life. And you may think that they're normal. You may think they're okay, but there's still things that we deal with from, from with things that have happened to us. And, and now I'm talking about an extreme thing, but there's small things. See, what's small to you might be big to someone else. And what's big, what's big to them might be small to you, but big to you might be small to you. It doesn't matter. It still exists. That's why the Bible says, he who wins souls is wise. Right? Why is it wise? Why is God telling us it's wise? Because God created man in the image of himself. The purpose of man was to live for eternity. Okay? Uh, you gotta understand. Understand this. Okay, so in the beginning, we'll, we'll, I'll give you a little, little bit of a history. So in the beginning, in Genesis, the Bible says that God created everything, right? Remember, how did He create everything? He spoke, right? He used words, right? And what was the word? John one one. What does it say? In the beginning was the word. The word was God. The word was with God. And then what happened to the word? What did it become? Flesh, right? Which is Jesus Christ. In the beginning, God, Bible says in Genesis, God spoke the word and everything was created. Everything. He spoke and the darkness and the light separated. Right? Trees begin to, to, to begin to grow. He begins to speak and all the animals and the birds and everything begin to appear. But what did God create with his hands? I hear I see lips moving, but I don't hear voices. What did God create with his hands? Man. He created man. Men and woman. He created us with his hands. Okay. And I was talking to somebody about this yesterday. I said, do you realize, do you guys realize that when we get to heaven, we're going to command angels? Right? Not angel, but angels. Okay? That's your nice job to command angels. But we're going to command angels. Understand this. We have authority over angels. The Bible tells us that we can pray 
and ask God to send a legion of angels, 10,000 angels to our rooftop to bring protection into our house. Spiritual protection, right? This is what the Bible tells us. We can demand, we're going to do, we're, we, are, we are able because we were created above an angel. The Bible tells us we're created by an angel. How do you know? Because the Bible says in Genesis when he created Adam and Eve, he says that God created man in the image of what? Himself. He didn't create man in the image of an angel. He didn't create man in the image of something that he just thought of. He created us in the image of himself. So the intent of man and humanity was to live for eternity. They say if the, the theory is if sin never entered, we'd still be in the garden, everybody would be walking around naked because, because nakedness was not a sin. It was natural. But because of sin and everything got all distorted and it all turned that way. Now, if God created us in the image of himself, he created us never to die, which, which brings us to why we mourn so much when somebody does die. You know why? I, I was told this by another pastor who was given who this was given to him by Pastor Alvarez. He goes, the reason why humanity mourns so much at the death of someone else is because the spirit of God in us doesn't know how to respond to it because it's an unnatural thing. Because the spirit of God was designed for eternity. Humanity was born, was supposed to live for eternity. So it, it's an unnatural spiritual thing with us, right? So we were created above an angel, right? So understanding that, that God created man in the image of himself, right? God created man out of his hands. He didn't speak it. We're the only thing God created from his own hands. This is why the Bible says, he who wins souls is wise. Because we're winning the very souls of creation that God created. You are a soul that God created. You are an individual that God said, I need you. He created you with his hands. You are a perfect person. A perfect living being. You are a perfect soul created by the very hands of God. Those in your life, they are the perfect soul that God is trying to reach. But... In order to reach him, he is using your life to do it. Imagine that. He's using your life to reach those people. Because if we don't reach him, what happens to that soul? If, you, if The Bible says, it's very clear. Unless a man is born again, he shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's it. It's that simple. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The Bible says it very clear. Unless, unless, and this, you have to do it, unless the man is born again, except that Jesus Christ become a new creation, he shall not, cannot, will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's how the Bible reads it. This is why, again, he who wins souls is wise. The purpose of the purpose of who you are in Christ is to win souls for Christ. It's to get people to share. Not nothing dramatic, not something that you have to learn in school and get it, you know, it's nothing to do with that, right? What did the previous scripture say? Proclaim his greatness and make known his deeds, right? Proclaim it and make known his deeds. Let people know what God has done in you. What is God doing in your life? So if I ask you, is God doing anything in your life? There's got to be an answer. Yeah, ask me something about it. Right? Proclaim it. Share it. Any, any questions to this so far? Now, Pastor Ben, you've given me a lot of ideas of things that are happened in the Old Testament. Long before Jesus Christ was born, you're telling me about all these things that happened before the birth of Christ. You're telling me these things about creation. You're telling me about what the Old Testament says about being wise and winning souls, right? But we're saved by the blood of who? Jesus Christ, right? We inherited heaven by the blood of Christ. 
He's our Savior, right? So, since I'm saying all these things, let's see what Jesus says about it. Mark 16, 15. Who wants to read this? Who wants to read it? And he said to them, Go, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Okay, who is he in this sentence, in, this, in the scripture? And he said, who said? Who's he? Jesus. He said it. Jesus said, this is the words of Jesus. In your Bible, your Bible, go into the world, all the way to preacher, that is going to be in red letters, right? It's a red letter edition Bible. It's going to be in red letters, which means the, the words of Christ, which means they should be pretty important if they're coming out of the mouth of Christ, right? Jesus Christ is saying, go into all the world and preach the gospel. To who? Every creature. Mm -hmm. To everyone. There's no limit. Right? There's going to be people that come across your life. They're not like you. They don't like the things you like. Right? If you guys knew me in the streets, none of you would like me. And some of you barely tolerate me already. <laughs> But in the streets, you wouldn't like me. If it wasn't for God, the collection of these of these people wouldn't just hang out on the Sunday and Wednesday all the time. We just wouldn't we'll do what we do because we're we're different people, right? But it's what God is doing within us that helps us. That's why we go into the world and, and, and preach to all creatures. That's how we get all nationality. That's how we reach other parts of the world, right? All creatures. We tell everybody. Okay. So we gotta preach the gospel. We gotta let people know. We gotta tell people about God. We got. We gotta. We gotta. 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 Okay. Okay. So that's the last scripture. I want to try something. Okay. I've done this before with a youth group. In my youth group. My and Martha's youth group were soul winners. They, they were able to reach the loss. Okay, so I need one volunteer. I need one volunteer. Either we get a volunteer or we get a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you guys. Get a volunteer or a volunteer. I think it should be Cynthia. That's who I think. But I'm not going to put her on the spot. I'm not going to say Cynthia to come up here. But it's gonna be a simple. It's gonna be a simple thing. What I want to do is, I want to show you. You can witness to anybody. You can witness to anybody. Okay. And I tend to challenge you that as I witness to you, that you get me stumped. Get me stumped. In other words, say something that's gonna get me to stop. Say something that that's gonna be like. Come on, sin, Thea. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to do, okay? We're doing this as an exercise, right? And as we continue with this Bible study, we're going to get a couple of you guys up here. Today, no, but we'll give you guys a, we'll give you guys a visual. Because this is important. This is a part of what God is, right? This is So many times you go to church, people go to church, and they're told they gotta go, they gotta you know go talk to strangers, go tell people, invite people, invite people, invite people, right? But never give you the tools to do it. They don't explain it to you. They don't give you a visual, they don't help you, they don't explain that, hey, you can do it. Now, I've been at this for a while, so I don't expect you to have the responses I have. But just know that there's ways around things, okay? So Cynthia, come here. Come here, Cynthia. I'm gonna come up to you. I'm going to hand you a flyer and invite you to church. I want you to give me a reason why you're not going to come. Or tell me. Say, you know, I'm not going to because of, or I don't want it because of. And, and it, may, it may get a little little funny or crazy, right? A little weird. But but you, I'm just, we're just we're just doing the practice just just so you guys can see. Okay? You ready? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so, so walking down the street. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? 
<laughs> Hi, good girls. How are you? <laughs> how are you doing? Good, good. Hey, I want to give you a flyer. I just want to invite you to church. Yeah. Thank you. Well, the Bible says you can start bringing life with Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know, if you, if you live in the area, you know, we're not that far. But we have church on uh, Sunday mornings at 10, Wednesdays at 7. And every other every other week we do this this crazy thing on Sunday nights, man. It's really good, man. I'd like to invite you to come on. You got time? You, you, can you come on out? Mm, I have to work. Well, that's okay. You know, I know you don't work 24 hours a day. We'll find some time in there. You know, uh, maybe you can find your way in there. Or, or you, you know what? I'll tell you what. Come show up one time, and uh, and we'll, we'll arrange something. Me and my wife will go to your house. We'll give you a Bible study or something. I'll help you out. I live with people. <laughs> oh, really? Man, that's exciting. You know what? Because sometimes I go in these people's houses, and there's a lot of people in there. They don't know them. But, man, I'll go in there. I'll talk to them. Let them know. And you know what? You'll see God begin to move in their lives because who God is in your life. God wants to do stuff in your life. How about it? What do you think? Oh. <laughs> Come on, get those reveal, right? <laughs> Why should I go? Well, you know, it's 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 funny you ask that question because you know a lot of times we don't know why. You know, why why should you go? Why shouldn't you go? Because a lot of times we, we don't we miss out on things in life because we're so busy thinking about why I should instead of why I shouldn't or why I shouldn't instead of why I should. But let me tell you, the reason why you should go is because just over 2,000 years ago, there was a man by the name of Jesus Christ who was, who was crucified on the cross and he shed his blood for one purpose, and that was to save your life. The Bible says that unless a man is born again, he will never inherit the kingdom of God. And that the reason why he went to the cross and took on the sufferings was because he wanted to give you a brand new life. That's why you should do it. And I'm not asking you to join a religion because religions, man, nah, they'll, they'll drive you crazy. I'm not asking you to join the church because churches, are, they can always take you where you need to go. But God will never fail you. And that's what Jesus Christ did for us. But you got to start somewhere. How about it? Would you like to come on by? I'll tell you what. I'll have my wife and I, what we'll do is we're going to come by your house on Sunday morning. We'll be there about 9 o'clock and we'll pick you up. You don't have to drive. We'll, we'll, don't worry about it. We'll got you. We'll pick you up. And if you're available, right out, if we don't have to go to work on Sunday, we'll take you out for lunch after. What, what, what kind of food do you like? Oh, goodness. Oh, praise God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Got the just Got the just of that? Now, we look at that and we say, we say something like, Man, I can't say all those things. The pastor's nuts. How am I going to say all those things, right? I can prove to you that you can say these things. You know how I can prove to you? Because if you've ever had a boyfriend or a girlfriend, mm -hmm. you learned how to say those things. <laughs> you just had a different topic. Right? You just had a different topic. It was something that you enjoyed or something that you wanted or something you thought you were missing in your life. So we did that to other people. Oh, I like the way she looks. I like the way he looks. And, and, and you begin you begin that flirting, right? The, the, the simple flirting, right? And before you know it, you have kids. <laughs> it's the way it works. So you follow what I'm saying? So when we say we can't, I don't know how, you didn't come. You didn't come out of your mama, Casanova, unless you're Cairo, because he Cairo loves women. He's a little, like a kid special. But you don't come out that way. You learn to talk to someone that draws an interest to you. You learn. You get to work. You start a job. You don't know nothing about that place. You may know something about the industry a little bit, but the way they operate, you don't know until you get there. And then what do you do? What do you do when you get there? You begin to speak to everyone around you. You begin to draw up the conversations with people, right? You begin to find common ground with your coworkers so you can have a friend that you can rely on and get information from. So we already do it. The difference is, now that we put Christ into it, oh, I, I don't know if I can do it. Right? I don't know if I can do it. But we already do it. So, your homework is this.
your homework is this. You got till next Wednesday. Between now and next Wednesday, you, they don't have to come, but you, I want you to experience at least one time in a week an opportunity to speak to somebody. Invite them to church, tell them about God. Give them the opportunity to tell them about the, about the good deeds of Jesus. Proclaim his deeds in your life. Say, you know, I want, I want to tell you about what God said in my life. And begin to, and begin to just share. I'm not trying to get super spiritual. Just share. Just share. If you don't have a flyer, that's okay. If they don't come to church, that's okay. All I ask you to do is share. Okay? Because next Wednesday, I'm going to ask you if you share. I might even ask you why you did it. Okay? So take opportunity to share. Share with them. Say one thing about Jesus. Share with them. You don't need to give them all the scriptures. You don't need to even give them a scripture. But you can give them what God has given you. Just share that. Any questions? Go ahead, Martha. What did Jeff say? Go ahead. Go ahead, sign up. <laughs> Amen. Does that make sense, you guys? Is that is that is that cool? All right. So, not, nothing nothing dramatic, just opportunity. Find opportunity. It could be your roommate. It could be your spouse. It could be family member, a coworker, a stranger, just somebody. Just somebody. And then let me know how it made you feel when you walked away. Because it will it will absolutely change your life if you share what God's done for you. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna end it right there. Um, and we're gonna continue this topic. Amen. And we're gonna do a little bit more of the um, demonstrations. Amen. Because I believe this is what's gonna help you guys. And and you're gonna see you're gonna you will begin to see a difference. Amen. Uh, any any last questions? Any input? Anything anybody wants to add? Anybody wants to throw an apple at me because you don't want to do it? Everybody shaking their head yes. All right, all right. We're gonna we're gonna close there. Let's uh let's bow our hearts as we, as we uh just missing prayer. Come on, Father, we thank you, God, today, God, for your message, your word, God. God, I pray, God, that you would encourage us, God. God, reveal to us, God, the things that you have done in our lives, God, the deeds, God, that we proclaim, God. God, and give us the boldness, God, the courage, the words, God. But God, give us the heart for the lost, God, that we would share these things, God, the things that you have asked us to do, God. We pray, God, that you continue, God, to help us build us and strengthen us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.